Hello everyone, Ellen Woodbridge here, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Australia. I would like to welcome you to the July Christmas Stampathon. This month's Christmas Stampathon is all about textures. Embossing, using texture paste, die cutting or embellishment, even ribbons to bring texture to your cards. This is the card I'm using not that I'm using, that I'm making today. And I'm using the So Very Merry stamp set, which I have embossed. I'm also adding some texture using the Dazzle More specialty paper. I'm using the silver, but does also come in gold. I'm using the silver embossing that comes in our basic, in our metallics pack um, using the festive pearls for some embellishment and I thought on the card I make with you today I would use the basics 3d embossing folder and this is the crosshatch this comes in a three pack um, and I thought that would work really well I've got the stylish shapes dies as well as the two and three eighths punch that um, we will use for this card now I have already done some preparation because there are a lot of little bits for this card but I will take you through how I did the coloring and we will emboss heat emboss and uh, dry emboss the card as well and if you're wondering this designer series paper is from the fresh as a daisy um, designer series paper pack and it is the b-side so let's make us some room here and we can get going okay so i'll leave the card up here for reference and I do have all my little bits here. This is actually serving as my team challenge for this month. So with my team, we set a card challenge and do, well, it's really swaps. Um, and we make X amount of every card and we swap with participants. So this month it is a color challenge and I chose five colors out of an image and it was Fresh Freesia, Gorgeous Grape, um azure afternoon tahitian tide and gray granite so i used all five colors but my request was to use three or more so if you're inspired by these colors i'd love you to pop over to my vip group and um share them over there but more importantly we would love you to pop over to the christmas stampathon group and show us your cards or tags or Christmas creations that you are going to make using texture and all we ask for is that you make multiple of that so I have taken the angel from the stamp set and I have silver heat embossed it onto a piece of vellum and I do have all of the blends to color it so I don't color on the front I do color on the back and I do have a piece of just white cardstock so I can see what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing now our stamp and blends do not come in gorgeous grape so I have kind of embellished um, gorgeous grape with our dark Highland Heather. Now I do have a bit of a cheat sheet here. I tested all my colours as I was making it and some of them I preferred the thinner end and some of them I preferred the darker, uh, the brush end. So this is our substitute for our gorgeous grape and we're just colouring on the back. And I, once we have done this colour, and it's much easier to stay in the lines when you're on the back. Because you can slightly go over the lines and it doesn't really matter. So just as that is drying off, I will show you how that comes through. 
and I may even go in with just dabbing with a second coat and that will just darken that colour up into more of a gorgeous grape. Where I have slightly gone over the lines, it doesn't really matter because um, I will be going in with another colour there and um, that will help tidy that up. So i am finished with our Highland Heather. I'm going to come in and I'm, we're going to be using both the dark and the light fresh freesia. So I used, and this one is my original, and I have made multiples, and these are my team swaps. And I've done these ones a little bit differently. I've used fresh freesia dark at the top, and then fresh freesia light at the bottom. So that is what I am going to do now. So do these sleeves. Just taking it slowly, just because I find you get a darker colour when you go a little more slowly. And like the other, just go in with that second layer. So I'd love to know in the comments, have you um, done this type of colouring on vellum before? Now, we're not going to colour in the, um, we're not going to colour in the wings at all. We are leaving them white and we are putting them on a white, um, on a white round stylish shape die. So they will come through and appear beautifully for us. I colour these three pieces in and we have the angel's um, cloak, vestments, don't know, are they vestments? That's kind of the religious way that they would um, talk about their robes, vestments. Okay, so to finish our angel off, I'm going to take our ivory marker and this is to do her face and her two hands now an angel could be male or female but i thought since we are doing um purple it kind of lends itself to a female one but then purple is the color of royalty so who knows okay so for the outside of the stained glass i have both dark in azure afternoon and tahitian tide and i'm taking it panel at a time um i did forget part of this so i forgot a part of the dress right here so let me go back and grab that just before i move on and i totally and utterly forget about it because that would not be a good thing now this section is going to end up a little darker because i did go over the lines there but it is still within the same color palette so scribbled some of that extra color off and i'm going to take one of these and just go every extra pane and then come back so this is our tahitian tide and skip that one and go this one and skip that one and go this one skip that one and go this one so it actually doesn't take long and I um, did all these last night while I was chatting with some friends and it was great therapy because I'm not doing any actual blending with the blends because that just doesn't come up on the vellum very well at all. Um, if you have 
done some actual blending with the blends, please tag me. I would love to see it. And just go carefully in round the wings here, just doing a little bit of fine work. And I do just have to be a little bit careful around these hands. Right, and one more section, and then we just need to do the edge. And I do that in grey granite. So I take them one, like the same as these blues, just every second pane. And just here, and I can just flip it over and check and see, have I majorly missed any sections i can see one just here at the base of her headdress hopefully that has done it which it has and now i just have the outside i've also got my color lifter to fix any boo boos so I will just leave that to the side and my colour swatch, I don't need any more. Okay, so I'm just going to go, now this actually, I'm going to go in with my bullet end. That's better. A bit more easier control with this kind of shape going around. Sorry, I really have to concentrate in with these shapes. So what texture do you think you will put in your Christmas Stampathon projects this month? We're very quickly skedaddling into the end of the year. So if you haven't participated before now, the um, other month's challenges are there waiting for you to do. Even if you do them after that month, we would love to be able to see what you do because it's inspiring. And we do, um, as admin, I've got uh, Ruth Trice, myself, Shirley Jones and Esther Howard. We all choose our favourite projects for the month and just put up a highlight to congratulate them in the group so you just get a nice shout out and uh, lots of people leave lots of beautiful comments now i don't think i have any cleanup to do here i think i pretty much stayed in the lines i did go out of the lines here into the purple a bit but i'm not absolutely worried about that so now I'm going to, we're finished with the Stampin' Blends, so they can go over there. My scrap paper I'm also finished with. I'm going to bring in my 2 and 3 eighths punch. This punch is available in the online exclusives. I am so very happy that um, we now have these products back so we lost our circle punches there for a little bit but we have them back so i'm just using the take your pick tool and using the i need to put this in sideways there's just a little too much vellum to get it really nice and even like i would like it that way so I just use the putty end because there's not quite enough vellum for me to hold on to. Actually, there is. But that did serve its purpose. Let's give it a squeeze and now we have our stained glass in the perfect circle. Pop that in the bin, pop that out of the way. So we have that done. And that will go on our stylish shape circle and on our stylish shape 
banner so that is that part done let's do some embossing and I because I made I think I ended up making eight or nine of these cards I did set up um, the Peace and Joy stamp, and this is also from the So Very Merry stamp set. I set this up on my stamp positioning tool. So, and this will work on any stamp positioning tool. As I said, this is the Fresh as a Daisy designer series paper. The B side is grey granite. I'm just going to pop that in with the magnet. I am going to take my embossing kit so this is the embossing additions kit take the embossing buddy I'm going to rub it over the area that we are embossing and I don't appear to have a scrap piece of paper so I'm just going to take one from my recycling bin I've got a couple here that's okay I just need it to create a funnel okay take our Versamark ink this is a nice sticky ink that is slow drying so perfect to be able to stamp something and then emboss without it drying instantly and not being able to get that embossing powder on there. So that has stamped. I really can't see what is on there at the moment, but I know it has stamped. So just bring in our paper and our silver embossing powder. Now, if I am smart, I should hopefully not get too much mess because we're only embossing a small area. I should be able to funnel this mostly back into the container, which I did. So that peace and joy is now coated before I knock this whole container of embossing powder over, which I successfully did last night, twice. Let's just pop this on, screw it up, and then we won't have any issues. Now this silver embossing powder comes in a pack of three. We have copper, gold, and the silver. So you buy that in a pack of three. I'm going to bring in our heat tool, put it on the second setting, which is the embossing setting. So that is now nice and warm. I do sometimes just heat the back before I heat the front. And I do keep the tool moving. So Keep it moving and then it will start to melt just like that and just like magic that is all done and we have that instant raised silver embossing. So let's try and emboss this card front while this cools off to the side. I'll bring in the crosshatch embossing folder if I can open it which I'll try very hard to and I'm just going to lie this in here so close this just pop it over here got it all set up that we bring in the stamp and cut emboss machine and I've got our embossing sandwich which is our base, our base plate and plate number four. So I normally go spine first for my embossing sandwiches. I can't do that with a card front. So we are going sideways. And let's see how this works. 
So this will just give extra texture to what we already have within this card. So let's just pop this away. Because I already had all my die cutting done. This was quite an easy project to prep. Okay, I may have... No, I did that perfectly. So I just need to burnish this edge so I wasn't quite straight but I did get the whole card front so now we are up to assembly so take our gorgeous grape cardstock so this is a three inch strip by the height of the card and then I'm going to glue that down using our multi-purpose glue. And I find it easiest because I know exactly where this is going on here. I'm just going to use lots of little dots. And I find this gives me a really nice glide and I'm able to manipulate this piece of paper to exactly where I want it. Now this piece of paper is actually a little bit long and that's okay but to make sure this is adhered really nicely and flat I am just going to get a couple of these here and pop them down. Now, while that is just adhering down, we will go back to our embossed angel and I would, will adhere this to our round die cut. So normally I say you can see any adhesive through vellum. When I have coloured this, I'm actually able to use our stamp and seal. And I just put... A little bit across the top and then across the bottom where we have colored and then we just line it up in the center of the die cut just like that and you cannot see the glue and even though I haven't got glue anywhere it sits fairly straight so next I'm going to put some dimensionals on the more dazzle paper. Now this traditionally doesn't take very well to having any glue on it. The dimensionals are best um, because they do, they kind of form into all this chunky glitter. So I put two on there. And I will be adding four in the end. But I'll put two on here, then two on the circle. So I'm just going to eyeball this, try and make the angel straight. Try and make it even on the edges, which somehow I managed. And then I'm going to take two more of these and pop them top and bottom above and below the banner this one really wants to stick to everything else and not where i want it so then i'm just going to take this off take our black weights off so now you can see that is really nice and flat and it has adhered perfectly. And now I'm going to nestle this in the circle of the sentiment. So it does come preformed in that circle to fit uh, both the Santa and the angel and to go around the bird as well, all the images this could go around quite nicely okay so now i want to adhere this 
piece to our card front. So right here and now, you can see the difference in the two textures. So this has the plain card base. This has the embossed card base. I'd love to know whether you prefer the embossed or the plain. I like both. I can't say I have a favourite yet. Because this is the first time I've done the embossed card base. I thought oh, I'll just do it on the video with you guys to see what you think. And just pop this down. So what I find is I just pop it down like this. Tap it down and that gets it flat across the bottom of the card and this really doesn't want to do what I want it to do today and I might bring in those weights again because this is textured I really do just want to make sure it adheres quite nicely now for our embellishing we are using our festive pearls now they come in gold silver a very light green and red now you will see on the packet it says red and green adhesive back pearls that is a typo and in the annual catalog they are in there as festive pearls so i don't want you to say they're not in there because they actually are it's just there's a slight typo so just to now finish our project, I just want to add one at the end of the Y in joy and one at the beginning of the P in peace. So that is our finished card. That did not take as long as what I thought because I made seven of them last night. <laughs> so this is my original and this is my textured up version, adding even more texture. So let's quickly go through what we have used as a recap. So we have used the So Very Merry stamp set. We have used the Stylish Shapes dies. More Dazzle Designer Series paper that comes in the silver and the gold. We have used the Festive Pearls, the 3D Basics Embossing Folders that come in a set of three. This is the Cross Hatch, and the 2 and 3 8 Circle Punch, as well as all the embossing um, supplies, which is the stamp and emboss powder, the heat tool, and the embossing additions kit. If you would like to purchase any of this, I will have a link to um, all these supplies below in the description. I hope you can come onto the Facebook group and check out everyone else's projects. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again next month for our August project. Have fun creating. Bye.